come back in this bit side, I'm going to show you exactly the golden rules to investigate your customer's pain points effectively. Why is it so important? It's because you're going to use that language to be able to articulate your marketing, your branding, and everything else. And that gives your power engagement so, so powerful. Are you ready? Let's get started. Everybody, if you're new to my channel, you've never come across my videos, remember this is part of the series for tech startups. And this is video number four, part of a series of six. All right, so we're going to talk about golden rules to investigate customer pain points. But if you haven't watched the previous video, go back, go back, go back, go back and watch the video before you come and watch this one. So it will make a lot of sense. You know, they all go in a specific order for a specific reason. So never tell, this is one of the part of the golden rules is that never tell your, 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 your target audience or your prospect your new product idea. Yes, to so try to be as ambiguous as much as you can be. So again, something they avoid giving you confirmation bias as much as possible. So give a little context to the person participating in their interview. So, so important in that interview, in that experiment. It's so, so key. And I'm going to show you exactly, exactly the question that you need to ask and how to ask them so they're actually revealing what your product is about so they can be so honest, really honest, but actually the honesty that you need to save you time and money. All right. So we're working on a service for people who love watching TV but are annoyed by the way current services work today. So you know, you're not telling, let's say for example, you want Netflix, you're not telling me, hey, hey, forget uh, BBC, we're going to do that now. All right. So be as ambiguous as you can be in the way you're presenting the situation, your, your idea. All right. Then look for false, remember we talked about falsification bias, which is uh, this is so important for your business and your successful launch of your brand. Look for the falsification bias. So these are the questions that you can ask. Question to avoid, actually, no questions to ask. Question you need to avoid when validating customer pain points. So do you think it's a good idea? This is just really reinforce your confirmation biases. Okay, so would you buy this product? They're going to tell you yes, because they don't want to hurt you, right? So why would you ask them that question? So don't do that. How much you pay for it? They can tell you, well, I want to pay 5,000 for it. But when it comes down to putting the money down, you realize we're not doing it. So really don't ask those questions in the side, right? This is a really bad question to ask. How would you pay for a product that did this? Yes, again, that's really, really bad questions. Those questions basically just reinforce, you know, your, you know, really enforce confirmation biases and you want to avoid those questions as much as possible. So I'm going to show you the question that you should be asking, okay, question to use when validating customer pay points. Okay, so elaborate, first of all, you want to elaborate on the problems you are willing to solve only one by one. Why doing that? Put them in a product that customers can relate to them. I don't know why I'm reading it. You can read as well. <laughs> makes no sense. So ask them, ask them how to show you how they currently solve a problem. So we, really the point of this exercise is not to focus on your solution, but focus on their behavior and how they are showing, solving the solutions right now. You really want to figure out that are they actually happy with the way things are being done right now and they will not be prepared to change it you know and so much more or maybe it's not an um, urgency right now this this is one thing that i say quite often like if your technology is perceived as a vitamin and not a painkiller people will not have urgency to act on it so this is very important this is why this exercise is so key let them talk about what they love and hate about it so you see in this experiment or in this interview you're really not focusing on your product you're really focusing on who they are and their behavior and so much more ask which or tools or products they are using so really understanding who they are so this is what it's about not about your product okay because then you focus on customer validation ask again how they did find out about the current solution you know about the current solutions for example if they're uh, driving to go to work you know how did they come up that's probably an obvious one but something else ask them how they pay for it you know ask them about how they pay for it and ask them what happens if they fail to solve solve each of the problems so the reason why this last last point is important because if you are provide if your technology provide more than one solution you want to address them one by one and again something the action and behavior and the psychology behind it will be completely detached but this is the best way to ask and be as against them as ambiguous as possible without actually telling them exactly what the product is about it will just reinforce your confirmation biases and you want to avoid that I hope that was helpful go back and watch it again and um let me know how it goes let me know how it goes i'm curious see you soon bye bye